Hey guys, this is Ryan with H2Flow. Today we're going to be going through the Level Smart installation guide. We're going to be going step by step so that you guys have a successful install. All right, guys, so step one of the Level Smart installation process is going to be installing the valve. We have the valve here. Uh, we have it plumbed right into the return lines after the pump going back to the pool. So we're going to use the return lines to get this water to the pool. We have it from a water spigot here behind the camera. I'll show you in a second. And so I just want to point out, this is a return line installation. We have the valve plumbed into the return line from a water source. The other option is to put into a designated fill line. So if you have a manual fill, you can plumb the valve directly in line with that to get that water back to the pool. So we're going to take you to the water spigot where we have our water source uh, to supply the valve here into the return lines back to the pool. All right, guys. So this is going to be our water supply here. We just turn this on. I always recommend getting a splitter so that we can still have access to our water hose here. And then we also have, this is going to be to the autofill. This is our new autofill supply line. It's going to be attached to the valve over at the equipment. Uh, then it's going to be into the valve and then it's going to be going to the return lines. And that's how we get our water to the pool to keep our pool full at all times. All right, so uh, we're on step two. First step is we're going to actually install the power transformer here. It's a three pin plug, standard wall outlet. We just plug that guy in and we're gonna install this. In this case, we zip tied it to the, wire, to the, to the wire behind it, and uh, we're good to install the controller next. All right, so we're, now that we have our power transformer installed, we're gonna actually install the controller here. We have our two pin plug that goes to the transformer, and this valve, this wire right here goes to the valve. So what we do, we already have our screws installed. Just pop it on here, and we're actually just gonna plug this guy right into the power transformer here and we are all connected. What we see here, it's all, lit, it's all lighting up. And so now it's going through the pairing process. All right guys, so we're gonna connect our valve controller wires to our valve wires. It doesn't matter if it's black on black, red on black, it's just either one to either wire is totally fine. Alternating currents, not a problem either way. So we're just gonna use the wire nuts that came in the kit to get these things all tight and snug. And Make sure that when the controller tries to turn the valve on, that that's what it does. And so just simple stuff like this. Now we have our controller and our valve connected, just like that. All right, so step three, um, we were going to actually install the antenna. This is the antenna tip that comes in the kit. Uh, six feet of wire here, to, six feet of, to get the antenna tip wherever you need it to go to be successful. In this case, the pool is right behind us. It's a very simple setup. Uh, we're going to attach this to the bottom of the controller here and just get that hand tight and snug. And this actually has a sticky back so we can attach it. And just to uh, make sure that, you know, um, to be we're successful with our antenna communication here, we want to keep it 8 to 12 inches away from any metal. If we attach it to the metal, it's going to have a harder time pairing. Uh, metal actually interferes with the RF radio signal. So we just want to kind of keep it away from any metal. That's very important. Metal gutters, metal fences, things like that. We're just going to stick it right here. Uh, we have the pool right here, so it's, it's going to be no problem to, um, to actually be, uh, see the pool and see the sensor in the pool successfully. So um, if you don't have uh, a, like a, a line of sight to the pool where you can actually see the pool, we have 25 feet of antenna extension that will allow you to place that antenna more in a, a position that it will be able to see the pool. So, so the goal is always to try to get that antenna tip to see the pool. If it can't, it can go through walls, it can go around a corner, but if, you, if it's not successful there, we do have these additionally. They do not come in the kit, but you can purchase them. All right, so now that we installed our antenna tips, we're on step four. Step four is going to be pairing the sensor and the controller. Um, as you see here, we're at the controller. It's flashing from the bottom to the top. All three lights are flashing. That means it's in pairing mode. That's exactly where we want it to be. Now we're going to go to the sensor in the pool and we're going to actually engage it into the pairing process. All right, so now that we got the valve controller plugged in, scrolling, looking for a sensor to pair with, we actually have the sensor here. The magnet is stuck to it as it comes shipped. Um, what we're going to do here is we actually looked at the pool. We figured out that this is where we want to install the, skimmer, the sensor in this skimmer here. It's close by, it's not gonna be facing the antenna, but that's okay. As long as the antenna um, is kind of, can kind of see the pool, we're in good shape. So we're gonna put on the entryway to the skimmer here, the skimmer throat. 
Um, we're going to put it on the flat surface there. But we want to make sure that it's going to pair with the controller as it sits right here. So we're actually going to remove the magnet and we're going to see three green flashes out of the little dot at the top. Three green flashes, that means it's engaged into the pairing process now. And we're actually going to go back to the controller and we're going to see it in its pairing mode. We've removed the magnet from the sensor in, at the pool. You got the three flashes from the sensor at the pool and now it's engaged into the pairing process here. You can see it on the action LED. Action LED is flashing every second. The first 30 flashes are all one second apart. Each flash after that is going to be four seconds apart. It may be a second or two later during the calibration process at the back half of the pairing process. That's totally okay. Um, what we're looking for after two and a half minutes of the pairing process is going to be a solid green sensor LED. The sensor LED indicates a successful pairing. If, if it's not a successful pairing, one of two things are going to happen. It's going to go back into the pairing mode, from, which is scrolling from the bottom to the top, or it's going to be a solid action LED where it's not flashing for, you know, for, for 30 seconds or so. Um, and so what we see here is it's still going through the process. Um, we're looking for a solid green sensor light in about two and a half minutes. All right, so now we actually have a solid green sensor LED. It was a successful pairing. Uh, the placement of the sensor in that skimmer that we decided on at the pool is going to be a good place to install the sensor. So now we're going to go move on to step five. All right, so now that we had a successful pairing uh, between the two, we know that this is a good place for the sensor to live. We're going to actually install it in the skimmer throat right in here. Um, and uh, we're going to use the epoxy that came in the kit to adhere it to the entryway of the skimmer. All right, so we got the epoxy that came in the kit here. We're gonna just take off the plastic that surrounds it. And we're gonna just make sure we net this. We wanna net it really well. It's very important for a long lasting stick to the tile that we want it to live on. So net it well. Another good tip before adhering a sensor is cleaning the surface that you want it applied to. Uh, if it's a dirtier pool, um, you just want to make sure that it has a clean and uh, the top half of the sensor is going to be out of the water. Just make sure that's in a dr it's dry. You don't want it soaking wet or anything if there's splashing. Uh, that, those two tips will help you make sure that we have a good stick. And I like to use the bag that it comes in so you don't get the white stuff all over the face of the sensor. It's not a big deal if you do. It just looks cleaner. And we just spread it across the back of the sensor here. Try to spread it kind of evenly. I like to make sure kind of some of it gets in this little holes there for a good hold. And something kind of just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna just hold it on there firmly for about a minute so that it sticks well. What you also wanna make sure of when you do this is your water level is gonna be set between about a half an inch up on the sensor to an inch up on the sensor. That is the, that is the range you want to have your water level. So make sure your water level is right in this area when you, do the, when you actually stick it on the tile. So here we go, we're gonna stick it on the tile. All right, so now that we have our epoxy on the back, we are going to hold it on here and we're just gonna press firmly. Do, give it a little wiggle let it kind of set it into place. And then just make sure it's somewhat even. It is marine grade pool epoxy putty. It will set wet. I always like to make sure the top part is dry just for a better hold. Just hold it there firmly for about a minute or so. And uh, that should give you a good solid bond. All right, so now that we have the sensor installed, it's adhered to the tile right in the entryway of the skimmer. We're gonna take the magnet and the water level is at the level that we want it to maintain at this moment in time. Um, it's about half an inch up on the sensor, which is perfect. Take the magnet, we're gonna put it on the right side on the little etching there for about five seconds. And what we're gonna look for is when we take it off is three green flashes out of the top of the sensor here, indicating that it's uh, registered and it's actually gonna be calibrating to this level now. So if we were going to go back to the controller near the equipment and we're going to watch it go through the calibration process 
and that way it's setting your water level. So the sensor LED is going to be flashing for about a minute. This is indicating that it's setting your water level to the level that it's currently at. Um, at the end of this, you should have a solid green sensor LED, and in some cases, it'll actually call for water. It'll give you an action LED as well, turning your valve on for seven minutes and shutting off after those seven minutes, just to show you that the valve is working and you are good to go. All right, guys, uh, so now that we've paired the level smart, we've set the water level, um, we're pretty much done with the install. The last step, number seven, is just if it's on a smaller body of water, we're gonna have to make sure that our valve flow rate um, is turned down maybe about three full cranks, three full entire cranks down using a flathead screwdriver. Um, this is gonna limit the amount of water that goes in on each fill and on a smaller body of water that's important so it doesn't go past your set level because it does give you seven minutes of water so let's give you less water through that seven minutes. That'll put you in a very good spot. So three turns down, that'll, that'll uh, make sure that you don't go past your set level. All right, now if we want, we've installed the sensor, everything's paired up successfully. Uh, we're done with all the instructions. Now what we wanna do is just make sure that our valve is successfully uh, connected to the controller, that our circuits are good. It's gonna get power when it calls for water. And we do this by doing a valve check. We place the magnet on here, we count to two once we see the red alarm light, take it off and it'll turn the valve on for five seconds indicated by the action LED. You'll hear the valve click on, you'll hear it click off. You should be able to hear water running through the valve and uh, that's indicating that when the sensor calls for water, you will get water um, via the valve. 